back into this stuff about predictive programming because we have still more slides that are going to blow you away. So let's look now at the 2012 Olympics opening ceremonies. And I've talked about this extensively before, but only after things got unsealed eight years later does it look pretty interesting because, okay, first of all, this doesn't look like a whole lot at first, but this is a Ferris wheel that appears to have been uh, digitally added to the screen. Uh, but you'll notice that you have the structure of a round object with little knobs on it, right? Little spiky knobs. And so if you tried to think about this Ferris wheel as if it was a sphere instead of just a wheel, and then you look at those little knobs, well, it might look like something you're already familiar with. And I think everybody knows what I'm talking about there. So that shows up somewhere around, you can see the minute marker. It's like the, uh, let's see. 11 minutes and 14 seconds. It's, it, and that by itself means nothing, okay? So don't, don't go hating in the live chat, everybody, because you haven't <laughs> seen this yet. All right. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Do a little yeah, hating in the live hate. chat. Whatever. Come on. So then some interesting things, really interesting things. Let's see what time this is. This is 45 minutes and 18 seconds. This is now the main, the main show, and they're doing all this interesting stuff. 45 minutes and 18 seconds, we see a little baby, and then it says, gosh. And then we have uh, all of these kids coming out in hospital beds, and there's tons and tons and tons of them. And then they show NHS, the National Health Service, which is the socialized medicine in the UK. Now, the next thing that we see is a video of this girl underneath the covers, and she is reading the Peter Pan book, and she is seeing a picture, as you can see what her flashlight is shining, shining onto, of this gigantic Captain Hook, who is much bigger than the bed where the kid is on in the picture, as if he's going to be, you know, pulling that kid out of the body, the kid is going to die. It's, it's a symbol of death, okay? Now, right at this point, as you see this, and, and this girl is going to become very, very important, okay? You hear this song, Tubular Bells, by Michael Oldfield. Now, if you haven't heard the song, it's got a very peculiar uh, riff that's in 7-8 time. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, three. That's how you count it, right? Okay. It's this really scary music from The Exorcist. Okay. And so right away when you hear The Exorcist, this is the image that has been burned in everybody's mind, the the satanic possession of this girl, including the the, the horrific scene in the movie where her head completely turns 360 degrees on the body, which of course would break the neck and would be impossible without some very bizarre thing going on. It's not really even practical, but it happens in the movie. So you get the Exorcist soundtrack starting to play and they actually bring out the real Michael Oldfield who plays bass and guitar and all this stuff. And then at the same time, they bring out the Harry Potter author, J.K. Rowling, and she reads a quote about Neverland from the Peter Pan book. And they show her out there. Now remember, there's the girl under the bed and she's looking at the picture of Captain Hook. You got J.K. Rowling, she's reading from the book and I'm gonna read you the quote as the exorcist music is playing, folks. Of all delectable islands, Neverland is the snuggest. It's not large and sprawling, you know, with boring distances between one adventure and the next. It's nicely crammed. When you play at it by day with the table and the chairs, it's not a bit frightening. But in the two minutes before you go to sleep, it is real. Now let's back up a little bit just for a second here. Because one of the things that she says is, out of only four little sentences, right? Boring distances. As if the concept of social distancing and this is in 2012, everybody, okay? This is back in 2012. Boring distances between one adventure and the next. It's not boring distances, it's nicely crammed. So it's actually, in just a short number of words, with the Exorcist soundtrack, with what we're about to see happen to this little girl, you've got them 
essentially what could be construed as a prophecy of, of social distancing, but it, it gets a lot worse, okay? So a lot of people have noticed that at this point, right after this, as she's reading this and you're hearing The Exorcist, you see all these people running out in these weird black suits, and the only thing you can see is their eyes, which are green. So this is one image of that. This is another image of them all running out, okay? And so this could symbolize and appears to symbolize some sort of plague, okay? And then immediately thereafter, as you're still hearing the music of the exorcist, we have this weird devil wagon come out, this, this wagon of death that's like, it, he's got the net to capture people, he's got these weird horses like the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and very prominently positioned in the foreground is this Asian nurse. She is very clearly Asian, and they linger on her face for a really long time. As this wagon is coming in, here's another image where you can still see her face. And then here is the wagon itself with all these weird, crazy uh, beings. And then you have the prime minister, who wasn't the prime minister at the time, Boris Johnson, but he is now, the prime minister of the UK, it's obviously supposed to be him, in a bed sick. And of course, he got this thing that happened a few months ago as well. He was one of the people who got it. Then the same... And made it through it at a ripe old age. That's right. I mean, look at the age of him. You know, the key, he made it through it. But this is the part you might not have seen, and I've been talking about this, folks, but I want to do the homework and finish the job for you. This is the same girl, okay, that was just reading that quote about the, the distancing, and, uh, you know, then all of a sudden her bed starts to levitate on these wires in front of this massive demonic apparition, which is supposedly Lord Voldemort from Harry Potter, because again, J.K. Rowling is reading, but it's very much like the angel of death. So her bed goes way, way up. And, you know, she obviously is trained to not be afraid of this. And, and you know, she must be a circus performer or something like that to be able to not be afraid. But anyway, here's her bed rising in front of this demonic apparition. She gets almost up to its face level and she's freaking out the whole time. It is clearly a symbol of like ominous death. Or possession. Uh, it could be possession too, it's right, because it's the exorcist. Right? As I'm watching this, it is, when she's talking about it, she's just before, the two minutes before you go to sleep, you have the hypnogogic state just before you wake up and just before you go to sleep. The sunrise and sunset. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is structuring possession. This is uh, easily in those right. states of consciousness that this little girl, as she's reading those stories and how they're doing it, it is structuring uh, possession. That's what happened to the girl in The Exorcist. She came to be, she gained, she became possessed by a demon. That's right, and she was in the bed the whole time. And yeah. look at what's happening here. Mm -hmm. It's very true. And why in the and hell? They're the puppet masters. But why would they do it this way to set us up? It's amazing. Well, they're that arrogant. So here's a really nice wide shot of her levitating. And then we actually see all of the kids in their beds get overtaken by these little virus monster guys, which clearly sounds like something that just happened. You know, this concept of something that's going to be knocking off a lot of people. And so then here again is an image of that monster there. And, uh, what actually starts to happen is that a bunch of Mary Poppins figures come flying in and then they, they parachute down and they have their uh, umbrellas, as you see here, and then the umbrellas uh, go away and they start walking around and the whole thing changes. Uh, and this is only, it's only when Mary Poppins shows up that the little guys run away and then all the kids' beds are illuminated. All the beds are lit up and they're all standing now. And look what it looks like. Look what that, that picture looks like on the right. Well, and this is the next thing, is that near the end here, and let's look at the time signature, this is uh, three hours and 58 minutes. So it's practically at the very, very end. This is like the last image that you see. Just like that uh, merry-go-round that we saw at the beginning, it looks pretty darn similar to some things that we're seeing now. So then, if you go to the video and you actually read the comments. This is where it was, you know, when I got these pictures. 
Uh, it said, who all are watching this in blank quarantine days? Yes, they predicted before. And there are thousands, and you see there's 17,000 comments. There's thousands and thousands of comments of people who noticed that this thing looks like a prophecy of something that was coming. So we got the bat coin. We have all of these visual images. We have the Asian nurse. We have the kids in their beds. We have this demonic apparition that's gigantic. It really looks as if they might have known something about this before, or they might have intended something like this to happen before. Or you plant the, or you plant the seed. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, you plant right. the seed. So that in a child watching this, in a child, in a young person, you plant the seed so that when it occurs, it's not as obvious to you as what it really is. Well, and also let's remember, too, that even the Mary Poppins part, Mary Poppins was one of the early movies where, according to what we've heard from insiders, the deep state was trying to familiarize people with the occult. You know, she's, she's dressed in black. She comes flying in. There's nothing religious about it. And um, it's... She takes care of the children. She takes care of the children. That the, yeah. the, the party in power. The parents that, can't really do it. She wrote, uh, the lady who wrote that, wrote that as a satire based on where English, where the labor and the, and the British, the labor and the, uh, the, the, you know, what was the Labor Party and the uh, workers, I don't know what it was, but the conservatives against the liberals. Mm -hmm. And she wrote it as a satire about what, what was happening in the workforces as unions came into play in the 70s. All right, let's look at another one because this is, this is uh, disturbing but necessary. So I talked about this one in another video, but I didn't get you the slides, so now we're going to do that. This was the Eurovision 2019 award ceremony. It ran from May 14th to 18th in 2019. On the last day, the big finale, the grand finale, was Madonna's performance. And it's very, very freaking creepy. Because it starts out looking like some kind of black mass with everybody in black robes and all this blood-like light on the background. And then she is right there appearing under what is called the Arch of Ball. And you see this in so many movies because it's a common element in modern architecture on purpose. But it actually symbolizes sacrificing young people and adults to ball. That's what the whole thing means. You can look it up. It's extensively used. And they show you the arch right at the beginning. It's right in your face. She's got one of her eyes covered, which is the one eye symbolism. She's got the X on her outfit, which again is there's some b bizarre, disturbing uh, symbols associated with this X. And also all the other stuff that she's wearing. It's very weird and occult. And then this is where it gets really creepy, Danny. Look at this. These women come out wearing gas masks. And they start dancing around Madonna in this black uh, high priestess. And she's wearing a crown. She's wearing a corona, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, she's got the crown on, the corona. And these people have gas masks, and they are like they're, they're they're dressed in white clothes, where she's dressed in black, as if the white represents like the good guys. So then she uh, says something very uh, perfunctory and and derogatory to this person about, you know, you'll never be. I forget the exact wording, and I'm sorry I didn't get the transcript of that, but you can go watch it. It's 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 very disturbing. She essentially says, you're not, it's like they're talking to humanity and they're saying, you don't deserve to be here and, and, and we're not going to let you be here. It, it, how it sounded to Population me. Population control. Yeah. So then she, she, she pulls up this person by the face. A lot more come in. And then she turns and she blows on her hand and all this fire shows up on the stage and they all fall down deceased. Now you see they got gas masks on. This is a year before anything happened. You got the fire, the gas masks. It's all pretty bizarre. And here is that image where you also see these, these you know, like the Masonic compass. Okay. And then it gets even worse because as the performance continues, 
and you see these people lying, they're still lying dead on the stairs, what do you actually see with, the, with confetti coming down like it's a celebration? These people have died. Death. And then what do you see on either side? It is the Statue of Liberty with the Liberty Torch having broken off and falling. And then there's like a burned out building behind. They are literally, and, and you see streetlights, right? So it's like rioting. It's the destruction of America. Something that you'd need to have a gas mask for or some kind of a mask. Something that's killing people. And all of these people lying on the stairs, and now they illustrate it with the broken Statue of Liberty, and there is blood, as you can see, all over the stairs. And then it, it again ends with these images of fire burning in the background. So, I mean, That's to me... That's conditioning. You're, you're so right. It's so the, arrogant. It's and, so in your face. Uh, and, a, and a targeted population. That's right. Look at who it is. It's millennials and the next generation, the Xers. It's targeting them for con conditioning that if she can do it, then it's okay for them to do it. Right. 